not, not, not one third of you, but you're saved. I know you're born again. I know you are spirit and you're saved. But actually, what God did for you and I when we got born again was that he did everything in your spirit that you needed to have done that you couldn't do. You couldn't redeem yourself. You couldn't forgive yourself. You could not raise yourself from the dead. You could not make yourself righteous. And so he did that. But what he what you could do, he left. And once you get born again, that's not the end. I, I have this thing I say that Jesus did not ever come to the earth to create converts. He came to create disciples. His whole goal was to bring man back into fellowship with God, not to give us real estate in heaven when you die. And real estate in heaven is fine. I mean, thank God we're going to heaven, but you're only going to be there a short while, then you're coming back here to the earth for a thousand years, and then heaven's coming down. So I know that you're looking forward to your mansion, but you won't be there long. Now, that's another subject. That, that, that just makes some people mad as I'll get out right now. So anyway, but there's a lot more to your life than just getting saved and going to heaven. You actually live here on the earth, and while you're living here on the earth, wouldn't you like to get your prayers answered? Yes, wouldn't you like to actually learn how God does miracles? Is it possible to learn how he does it and reproduce it? Yes. Yes. Can we reproduce the law of lift when we want to? Yes. yes, we can. We don't even need to pray. Well, you want to, some of y'all, when you get on airplanes, you're praying like, oh, help me, Jesus. <laughs> Especially when they're landing, you're praying. I can hear everybody in there, they're praying in the spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So sometimes when a, when a pilot lands, you're thinking, has he ever done this before? Amen. But, you know, there are laws in the kingdom that work all the time if you learn how to work them. Miracles should be a regular part of life for you and I. But how do we get them? Are we sitting around just waiting on God to do it? No, actually we're not. So I'm going to make a statement to you right now because we're taught, we're last week we left off talking about the imagination of a man. God gave you an imagination. The devil didn't give you the imagination. God gave you imagination. And he wants you to use it wisely. He wants you to use it rightly. Remember when you were a kid and you said, when I grow up, I'm going to be? And yet many of you, I want to be a fireman, and I want to, I think Joselito wanted to be an army man, right? Isn't that what Joselito wanted to be? And Willis wanted to be a businessman. He wanted to be a football player, but wrong state. Anyway, well, I'm going to leave him alone right now. All right. But you know, all of us, when we were kids, we all had dreams. Jesus made a powerful statement that if, that the kingdom of God is like a child. What was he talking about? The fact that a child uses their imagination. We're going to talk about the imagination. And so let, let me go ahead and get way ahead of myself. Elon Musk isn't saved. Somehow or another, he's tapped into a truth. Boy, quiet in this Baptist church. So listen to this statement. Imagination is the birthplace of... Of your miracle. Your imagination is the birthplace of your miracle. God has to have your imagination before he can do anything through you. He has to do it in you. All right, now we're going to study, we're going to read right now about Mary getting pregnant. I know it's not Easter, I mean, not Easter, Christmas. And I know it's not December, but we're going to study the birth of Jesus anyway for a few minutes. Is that all right? So Luke chapter 1, verse 28. Now the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. Having come in, the angel said, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And when she saw him, she freaked out. That's Daryl Morgan translation of troubled at the saying. Now think, I want you to think about this for a minute. She's in there making tacos. 
No, she's not. Not tacos. What was she making? I don't know what. What do Jewish people make? Huh? Unleavened bread. She's making some unleavened bread. I don't know what she's making. And all of a sudden, there's this shiny dude in her house going, hey. And she's like, excuse me. You know she's freaking because he says, fear not. It scared the heebie-jeebies out of this girl. And we don't know how old she is, 14, 16. And she's not that old. But she hadn't been reading her New Testament or she would have known he was coming. I'm saying that being facetious because she had no idea that this was fixing to happen to her, that some angel was fixing to pop in her house and give her a greeting. And, and it startled her because she had no idea what in the world this guy is even talking about. So let's go back and read it as though Mary really didn't have any idea this is happening. Let's read it again. Having come, the angel said, Rejoice! <laughs> My name is... Darrell, Pastor Darrell, my name is Mark Hankins. Highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. She saw him. She was troubled at the saying and considered what manner of greeting is this? What in the Sam Hill are you talking about? Now listen to what he says. And the angel said, don't be afraid, Mary. You found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb, bring forth the son, Call him Jesus. He'll be great. He'll be called the son of the highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He'll reign over the house of, of Jacob and his kingdom there'll be no end. And Mary said, I don't even have a husband. She, she, think about what she's going through right now. I'm going to have a baby. I can't have a baby. I don't even have a, a husband. I don't even know a guy. I don't. How, what are you, in other words, this is a very strange thing for her ears to hear. You're going to have a baby. She's going, how am I going to have a baby? Because normally, babies happen when men and women get together, and she don't have a, a man. Now, I'm going to jump ahead of myself. God said to you, he's going to bless you coming in and bless you going out, and you go, I don't even know a banker. I don't even have that good a job. I'm going to heal your body. Yeah, but I don't even have a good doctor. You see, we're always thinking of that in the natural. Anytime God's going to do something, we're thinking in our mind that God's got to have a natural way to bring something natural, but not so. Now, we know that Jesus is the Word made flesh, right? In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The angel came down and got Mary pregnant with the Word of God. But he's got to have her cooperation in order to bring this thing to pass. So he says to her, Mary, you're going to have a baby, and you're going to get pregnant. And it says, and the Holy Ghost will come on you. Now, let's go back here for a moment. Let me just read it to you because I know you're looking at me like you hadn't even finished the Christmas story. And the angel said, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, the Holy One will be born and will be called the Son of God. I want you to think about what this angel just said to this young lady. Remember in the, in the book of Genesis when God said, earth be, and, and I said earlier this morning, monkey be. Where was a monkey before there was a monkey in the mind of God? Think about that a minute. It was in his mind. He had done all of the creating in him. But the minute he said monkey be, the Holy Ghost came down on the dirt, hovered over the dirt, and made a monkey. Well, sparrow, dinosaur, tree, everything God said the Holy Ghost birthed it. Now think about what I'm saying. Because here Mary is fixing to get pregnant without natural means. Mary just gave birth to a miracle by the Word of God. This is the way God does miracles now. One of the things that we have not taught you enough on 
we've made a very big deal about the word and faith and faith and faith. But we haven't done a very good job to talk to you about hope. Because Mark eleven twenty three says, whatever you desire. Desire is not a fleeting idea. It is a very deep seated something down on the inside of you that says, I have a desire. It is something brewing in you you must have. That whatever you desire when you pray, believe it's granted and you shall have it. In other words, it is the desire that's giving hope to the word of God that causes you to become pregnant with a miracle God's fixing to do. Now the next thing you need to remember is that all miracles don't happen in a day. So how long did it take before Jesus popped out? Nine months. Don't rush it. She got her miracle that day. We didn't see the baby for a little while because the baby is cooking. He's in the crock pot. But he was just as much baby. He was just as much alive as he was when we finally saw him. Your miracle is in you. Now, now we're, we're going to, we're going to go, go oh, glory to God. Let me see how to say this. Mary got pregnant with the word when she received the promise, but it was nine months before it happened. This concept or this idea of being pregnant with the word of God is not new. This is the way God answers prayer. You might think that you they that she had that baby like 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 well, soon. Where's Tracy? Where's Tracy? Is she she she's going to say Tracy had her baby. Tracy's been pregnant now for a little while. She didn't get pregnant the day the baby came. But we do know something about Tracy. She has a husband, and they've been kissing. Because a woman cannot get pregnant without a man. And you can't get pregnant without God. You see, your miracle might be, you might want to start thinking about your, your intimate times with him. Amen. Just a thought. I want to read something out of this book by Prayer That Brings Revival by Dr. Yonggi Cho. And um, he's, he's going to tell the story when he was um, a young preacher. He started off in Korea with nothing but an army tent and preaching the gospel. He's just a, he's just a boy or just a young man at this time. And he was learning about prayer and learning about the Word of God. And so one day he had a little apartment. He wasn't married yet. And there was nothing in it but a couple of blankets, and he'd go in there and sleep at night. And there was no heat, and there was no air conditioning, wasn't anything in there. And then he, had, he was reading his Bible, and he started realizing that he could pray, and God would give him stuff. God would take care of him. So one day, he got the bright idea that he needed a bicycle to go around and visit people in his church, and he needed a desk and a chair. And I'm going to let, you, I'm gonna let, you, let him tell the story. He said, I decided I needed three things. Since I had no way to visit members, I needed a bike. I had nothing to which to place my Bible, so I needed a desk to go, and I decided I needed a chair. And these three items seem very small today, but in 1984, that was a pretty big deal in our area. However, in complete confidence, I asked the Heavenly Father for three items. I want a bike, I want a desk, and I want a chair. Month after month, I repeated the petitions to God, feeling that if I constantly requested the same thing over and over, he would finally hear me and answer me. Did he? No. 
Because that's not how you get prayers answered. That's the common way people today believe God for miracles. Just talk, just, just drive God nuts a while. Maybe he'll get tired of hearing you. Yet after six months, I became discouraged, and I said, God, I know that time means nothing to you. Yet I really need these things now. Perhaps you plan on taking a lot longer in answering my request. But if you wait too long, I'll be dead and I won't need them. <laughs> he prayed despondently. I heard, and then he said, I heard a still small voice. Son, I heard you the first day you prayed six months ago. Well, then why didn't you answer me, I asked. You asked me for a bike, right, God said. However, there's many bikes. What kind of bike do you want? There's different desks out there. What kind of wood do you want? What kind of desk do you want? There's all kinds of chairs. What kind of chair do you want? These words spoken to me that night revolutionized my life. I decided to ask God for three very specific things. I wanted a bike made in America. He wanted to swim. For him to ask for that in Korea would be huge. That would be like me asking for a Toyota or something. I decided to ask him for three specific things. A bicycle made in America. At that time, I had three choices of bikes. An American one that was sturdier. I asked for a, fil for a, a desk made out of Philippine mahogany. And then uh, finally, I asked for a chair. Not any chair. I wanted one with little wheels on the bottom so I could run a swing around my room like a big shot. <laughs> Within two weeks... I was given a slightly used American bike by the son of an American missionary. I received my desk made from mahogany wood in the Philippines and a chair to go with it. And, of course, it had little wheels. The amusing part of the story took place before God's provision came because one Sunday I preached on Romans 4, 17. And as I was preaching, I told the people during my sermon with great assurance, I have been given a bike, a chair, and a desk. And then I went on to describe them. Three young men in the service said, Pastor, we want to see the, these items that were given to you. So I took them to my house. On the way to the house, he began to wonder, how am I going to answer their question? Because he doesn't have them yet. He's believed. He received. On the way home, I found myself fretting over what I was going to say to these young men when they saw an empty room. I opened the door. I saw them looking around the barren room for a bike, a chair, and a desk, and said, Pastor, where are they? Right here, I said, pointing to my stomach. Where? They said, right here, pointing to my stomach. He said, let me ask you a question. I calmly continued, amazed at even my own answer. Where were you before you were born? In your mother's womb, one said. Correct. Did you exist before you were born? He said, with a glimmer of light began to shine on their faces. Yes, naturally, we existed in our mother's womb. But no one can see you. I smiled, and I told them, finally, I'm pregnant with a bike. <laughs> well, now, their faces turned to surprise and then laughter. You're pregnant, they said. I tried to caution them not to tell anyone, but something as strange as a man being pregnant could not be kept quiet. So the left has been right all along. <laughs> the word spread through the entire neighborhood that the pastor of the local church is pregnant. Women would look at me and smile when I walked by and little children would pat their hands on my belly to see if they could feel the bicycle. <laughs> Yet when God miraculously provided each item, I was the one smiling. In this way, God taught me to be specific in my petitions. This is how to pray in faith. Do not pray in generalities. Know what you need and write it down. Tell God exactly what you're asking for and begin to confess you receive it. Now, now his analogy is real. Was he pregnant with a bike? He was. He had, God had to get that bike in him to get that bike to him. You see, God wants you pregnant with the thing you want before you'll ever see it. Because if you can't see what you can't see, you'll never see it. Amen. Now, we know this with women having babies, and we know this in the natural. But do we know this in the spiritual? We should. 
Now, I mentioned the fact that you need to know God, but let me ask you a question. I want you to get your Bibles and go to Genesis 11. Elon Musk is not saved. How's he doing what he's doing? Same way. Though he's not saved, he's still applying a spiritual law. Isn't he? He's using his imagination. As a boy, he began to imagine cars that ran on electricity. Then he began to imagine flying in outer space. His imagination has created the wealth. And, and, and God's not doing it. Does lift work, whether you pray or not? Does it work any time you, that you use it? It does. The principle works. Faith is the substance of what you hope for. I think the biggest issue with us is not faith. It might be that many people are hopeless. The Greek word, the Hebrew word, and I stole this from Andrew Womack, and I'm going to give it to you now. And just give him credit once. For imagination is yetzer, Y-E-T-S-E-R. It means mind, imagination. It also is the Greek, I mean the Hebrew word, for to conceive. God conceives your miracle in your imagination. He had to talk to Mary and say, highly favored one, we want you to get pregnant. And she had to say, according to your word, be it unto me. She had to receive that word. God couldn't get her pregnant without her will. And he can't get you pregnant without yours. But he's got a lot he wants to do in you. But if you can't, he can't get you to see it, he can't do it. Because faith is the substance of what you hope for. See, Satan goes after your hope far more than he goes after your faith. Because he can't stop the word. But if he can stop the birth process, you'll never have a baby. We're wanting to walk up in front of a room and someone lay hands on us and drop a baby out. It don't usually work that way. Don't, I'm not saying that God can't do some things in our life. That's not the way he normally operates. He says it a different way other places in the Bible. He talks about a seed. Seeds don't sprout in a week. You plant it, it'll come up. Now, here's the good news. If you plant a tomato, it'll be a tomato. If you plant squash, you're going to get squash. You plant doubt, you're going to get doubt. But you plant the word, whatever word. This is a book, the Bible says in Hebrews, that the word of God is living. This book is alive. There's not another book on the planet that is alive. This one is alive. This one has the ability for you to read John 3, 16 and reproduce in your life what happened to Jesus when he died and rose from the dead. Amen. Not another book on the planet that can reproduce after its own self other than this book. Now, if you want a chair, don't plant a chair. Plant an acorn. Grow an oak tree or a walnut tree, cut your chair out. Don't shout me down. If you want prosperity, sow the word of God in your heart, not your $10 bill. $10 bill don't produce $10 bill. The word of God in your heart is what's producing the money that you need to get the thing done you need. Do you understand that? Now, I'm not saying you don't sow cars, and people say that, but really what you're sowing is the Word of God. The thing you're doing, the thing you're sowing, it's giving you hope because that's what you see. 
Years ago, and I know Nathan knows this, years ago the Lord dealt with me and I wanted a new watch. But I wanted to know that if I sowed something and I never told anybody. You ever notice that all the preachers seem to run around uh, talking to you about all the things they're believing God for? Let me give you an example. I'm believing God for a new Rolex. Am I believing God or am I telling you to buy me one? Don't shout me down. So I decided I was going to believe God for something, and I wasn't going to say a word to anybody. So somebody came in. I don't remember. I know it was Kenny, Kenny Robinson. And I gave him the watch off my arm. It was a pilot's watch. And I walked up and I said, I'm going to give you my watch. He goes, oh, man, I like that. And I sewed it to him, and I said to God, I ain't telling anybody. And I want to know whether given it shall be given will work. About a month later, or maybe three weeks later, someone walked into church here and looked at me and said, Pastor, I was in the store the other day. I could be missing God, but uh, I bought you a watch. And God went, touche, and I went, all right, one for God. I just wanted to see if it really worked. And it did. But you see, I had a watch on my mind. I gave with the expectation that it would bring back a watch. I could have said, I'm giving this watch and believe for a truck, but it wouldn't have been a very big truck. <laughs> Genesis, are y'all all right? Say, I'm pregnant with a miracle. Genesis 11, 1, the whole earth had one language and one speech. It came to pass as they journeyed from the east, they joined in the plain of Shinar, and they dwelt there, and they said to one another, come let us make bricks and, make, and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone, they had asphalt for mortar, and they said, come let us build a city, a tower whose top is in heaven. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower that the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, indeed, the people are one, and they have one language, and this they begin to do nothing that they purpose my king james says purpose to do look what it says in king james nothing they imagined will be impossible wow. now listen to what god said about a natural non-born again man look at what he said about elon musk look at what he said about you nothing you've even imagined you. is impossible for you, you. whatever you desire when you pray, believe it's granted, and you shall have it. With God, nothing is impossible. Now, now think about that for a minute. No, nothing a human imagines. That is huge. What's God need to get it to you? The word, yes. But you're going to have to get pregnant and you're going to have to mix this with hope. All right. Now, for all of us in this room that are older, I didn't say old. If you're older, you understand wine ain't no good until it's aged. So come in here and have a drink of me because I'm good wine. All right. But the ones of us that are older... Remember the cartoon. This is Dick Tracy. Now, do you know when, we, when that cartoon came out, talking to a watch was impossible because there was no wire on it. All of our phones had a cord connected to a wall to a telephone pole that went outside and if you didn't have a cord, you don't talk to nobody. But someone had an imagination. We're going to talk to our watch. Crazy idea. Was it? Well, people are talking to their watch now. Do you think that that imagination created the satellites that are, we're now using? You bet it did. Nothing that a man imagines 
Nothing. Another one that kids do today, and, and I love kids because they, they're not asking adults whether they can do stuff. They just do it. But you know, these little, little things that kids are playing with, they fly them around little, what's that thing called? Just drones. Some kid got the bright idea if I made one big enough, I'd stand on it. And they never asked the FAA whether they could or not. They just did it. And it is the neatest thing in the world when you go on YouTube or you go on your Internet and you see kids flying around their neighborhood in a drone they made. And I'm going, we need one of those. Sure, get us to church a little bit quicker than just go out there and sit in my little drone and just kind of... But who told them they could do that? Nobody. They just did it. The things kids are doing now, when you go on the Internet, they're crazy. But they're working. I saw the, guy, the kid on the surfboard. Used to be, they needed waves. Now he's just got a little remote, and he's on a surfboard, and he's out fighting. Not all the... Where are these things coming from? They're coming from their imagination. Once they imagine it, they start trying to figure out, how do we do this? Now, I'm going to tell you another one. Now, this is a little more closer to home. Someday, uh, not, I mean, years and years ago, some guy got the bright idea to quit using hamburger meat to make a burger. And he thought, I wonder what that would be like with a chicken in it. Now, I know y'all know where I'm going, but that didn't start down the road here. It started in some man's imagination. What if we put a chicken in a bun and sold it? And you know what we'll do? We'll advertise with cows. That'd be cool. And when he had this thought, there was no chicken sandwich. There was no Chick-fil-A. All there was was an idea. Yeah, that's Georgia for you. Amen. Now, let's, let's go back a little bit and talk about this a minute. When God made the garden, how many houses were there? There weren't any. How many rings were there? How many necklaces? There weren't any. God put the raw materials there. God's not giving you houses and jewelry. He's giving you the raw materials and an idea. Amen. And telling you nothing is impossible to you. Amen. Oh, boy. Now, y'all, I feel the vibes. Like a hippie, I feel the positive vibe. Because some of y'all are like, Shandai. I'm going to get way ahead of myself. Time spent alone with God is not wasted time. You need to get intimate enough to get pregnant. Who was it said this? And I think Lisa might remember who it was. Yeah, it was Mac Hammond. When we were out there at the leadership conference, he said, businessmen... Wealthy businessmen take time every day to dream. It is one of the most important things we do. Elon Musk said most people are too busy. See, you think you couldn't be a billionaire. You can be a billionaire sitting home in a chair if you dream a little bit. All right. It's quiet in this, I'll tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo! Glory be to God, Jesus is Lord. Now, let me quote a couple of scriptures to you. Faith is a substance of what you... So the word yet, sir, is an Old Testament word, but it's not a New Testament. And the word imagination is really not even in the New Testament. But it is. It's in a different word. Hope. 
Faith is the substance of what you hope for. So listen, to the degree God can get you in hope. So what is hope? What is hope? How many of you have ever seen a hot air balloon? Have you ever had anybody look at you and say, you're just a bunch of hot air? You didn't know till this morning that's a compliment. Because that balloon, which is substance, is going nowhere unless it has a bunch of hot air. Your Bible, which is substance, isn't going anywhere until you can get it full of a whole lot of hot air. When I, was, when I first got born again, and I know you all have heard me tell this story, I lived in a little concrete block house, no heat, no air conditioner, no carpet on the floors, a, a fireplace for heat in the winter, a pot-bellied wood stove in the kitchen. Y'all ladies know what I'm talking about. And a garden out back. Che remembers this, where we had rabbits and we had pigs and we had chickens and we had uh, a cow for milk and we had a garden. And I remembered when, um, when the Lord first started talking to me about ministry, when I'd spend time alone with God, I began to have mental images of me standing in a church preaching the gospel. And I had no money, and I had nothing. But God began to get me pregnant with a dream of where I eventually went. Everywhere he's ever taken me, he takes me there in my soul before he ever takes me there in the natural. So I'm going to tell another story. I, got, I just got one. I, I got a bunch of them. But years and years ago, I was listening to a cassette tape. Y'all remember cassettes? By a guy named Kenneth Copeland talking about flying airplanes. Well, my father was a military pilot, a Marine Corps pilot. He's a captain. He's, his mom said he flew with Pappy Bowington. I don't, I have no record of that. But he, but he was a lifer. He was a lifer in the Marines. In 20 years, he's one of the men that designed the C-5A Galaxy. And I'd always had a desire to fly, but no money. Well, I was listening to Kenneth Copeland on a cassette tape one day, and I got pregnant with a dream of flying. Well, I have no money and I have no plane, but I do have an imagination. And I got a Honda Civic. So I began, every time I would go anywhere, is to go out and get in my car, roll the window down, and say, clear prop, which is what you say before you fly so no one's out there gets cut up in the blade. And then I would crank up my airplane I would call the tower and taxi out to Garnett. And then I'd call the tower before I pulled on the Broken Air Expressway. 01 Civic, <coughs> taking off westbound Broken Air Expressway. I'm flying. But everyone that, I, that knew me thought, He's lost his mind. <laughs> Until one day, a church named Word of Life called me on the phone and asked me if I'd come preach. And they handed me 50 bucks. And I went, hmm. And I went to a little airport down here. An airplane was 28 an hour. An instructor was 10. And I handed it to him, got me a log book, and I flew one hour. That's all the money I had but I was already a pilot. The rest of the money came. See, money follows division. Oh, I'm doing good. A lot of times we think we're waiting on the Lord. We're really not. We quote a scripture all the time, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So we talk a lot about the mouth. But are we talking enough about what's going on? When, because whatever you're, whatever's going on in there is going to come out of your mouth. But what's going on in here? Because something's going to have to be going on in here. You see, 
You can't believe God for healing while you're planning your funeral. You can't believe God for a, for a new house while you're looking at mobile homes. You want to start seeing miracles? Start praying for people in your mind. Start see yourself laying hands on people. All right. Go to Psalm 91 now. Let me, let me quote a couple of scriptures here that I need to tell you. The word of God is alive and sharper. It says, Adam knew Eve and she conceived. Adam knew Eve. What's that mean? He knew her. No, he didn't know her like I know you. He, he had intimacy with Eve and she got pregnant with a son. Then it says, Joseph knew not Mary until Jesus was born. Well, he knew Mary. But he wasn't intimate with Mary. There's another scripture that says, they that know God will do exploits, will be strong and do exploits. What's he talking about? Intimacy with God. They that know God, not know about God. Fellowshipping with God is the secret to miracles. You get alone with him, you coming out different. You get alone with a rich guy, you coming out rich. Don't shout me down. All right, Psalm 91. Let me see how we're doing. Oh, my gosh, Lisa, I'm getting faster and faster, aren't I? See, a lot of people are believing for a miracle. They say, I'm believing for a miracle. Where's your desire? What are you doing? What are you doing inside of you? When I'm reading my Bible, I'm reading it. I, I want to see a picture. The woman with the issue of blood said, and we thought we, we've majored on what she said, but we have never majored on what she did. She said, if I grab his garment, I'll be healed. But you see, she was already, she already knew when I get a hold of that anointing, it's coming in me, and I'm, I am a healed woman. If I can just get a hold of his garment, I'm healed. But she saw that. She had that, she was pregnant with a healing long before that anointing hit her. So strong that Jesus didn't even know she was there. And she got a miracle. So we know it wasn't his sovereignty that did it. She did it. She reached up there and she took that anointing off of him. And she pulled that miracle to her. But that's what drove her out of her house. That's what drove her into the crowd. That's what drove her to get a hold of his garment. Now, I'm going to read a scripture here about you and I. There's a, God designed you for fellowship. We're called the bride of Christ. What happens when a Christian spends time alone with God? You come out real different. God marries not the last person Jesus wants to get pregnant. This is the secret to miracles. And anybody can do this. God told Abraham, he said, you're the father of nations. And he goes, what? He said, come outside, big boy. Count the stars. One, two, three, four, five, six. What's he doing? I need you to see this. I want you to see yourself as a father of multitudes. He said, now count the sand. He's giving him image. The most powerful thing you do every day is to look at a thing called tell a vision. The fastest way of communication is tell a woman, but there is a television. <laughs> but don't let someone else do all of your thinking for you. Amen. Now I'm gonna uh, let's just go ahead and blow your mind real good. You remember, the, you remember the book 
um, 23 minutes in hell and how Jesus wanted to bless the guy that he sent into hell so he'd come back and write a book. He said he always enjoyed outer space, so when he got him out of hell, he flew him out there like Superman. Wow. Could it be? Could it be? Come on, y'all. Yeah. That someday... Come on, y'all. This. Mm. Where do you think people are getting these crazy ideas of people flying? How did Adam get around? We know he walked on water because Jesus did. Okay. According to your faith, be it unto you. Oh, boy. Mm -mm -mm. Whatever you desire, whatever, 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 whatever. No, no, there is no limit on the world, whatever. Not when you die, whatever. All things. What's all things? I'm doing real good. I think some of y'all getting pregnant. You're like, I am getting pregnant right now. I'm going to tell you, you're doing something on the inside of me. Elon Musk is not the last, is not the only person who should be running around with a billion dollars in the bank. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, my mother was poor and my father was born. We're from Kentucky. <laughs> Psalm 91. He who dwells In the secret place. You ever get alone with him? Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say he's my refuge and he's my fortress. He's my God. In him I trust. Let me ask you a question. What does next month look like for you? How many people have you ever prayed for that came back from the dead? How many? Don't be afraid. Four? Expect it to increase. Why not? Why not? There's no scripture that says, these signs follow Andrew. There's no scripture that says, see, signs follow Smith Wigglesworth. Amen. Come on, y'all. We do, I'm doing real good. Amen. Amen. Okay. Every time I've ever wanted to change what I drive, I go by, a, I go into the, the dealership, and I say, I need a pamphlet with the truck I want on it. If I can't find it, I go on the internet because the last one that I wanted was a jacked up Toyota Tundra, three and a half inch lift, big tires, those little bars that run down the side, a, a, a thingamajiggy, and everything on it, leather seats, and I went and I got me a picture of it. And I put it in there on my wall because I need to see it. Now, understand, I didn't, I didn't tell you I had any money. I didn't have any money. Mark eleven twenty three 23, and it say nothing about how much money I have. Amen. Whatever I desire, when I pray, desire, believe God said yes, and I shall have it. Amen. God was not limited. Mary said, I don't know a guy. He said, I didn't ask you that. I don't know a banker. Didn't ask you that. 
I didn't know a dollar. I didn't ask you that. I don't know a millionaire. I didn't ask you that. It's good. And so one day I got my truck in there. Mark Hankins walks up. The Bible says if two agree. He said, what's that? And I said, my truck. He said, go buy it. And I, and I, I ran out of my office. I didn't even tell Lisa where I was going. And I went down and they said, we don't have one. Yeah, they did. The, the man that owned the Toyota dealership was making one. But he didn't tell me that. But the Lord knew there was one there, and he had already fixed it all up just for himself. And then he showed it to me, and I drove home in it. You know when they started making that truck? When I prayed. Okay. I don't believe in lids. That's a heavy thing to say, and I know some of you businessmen need to hear this. There is no, don't ever tell me what you know and don't know. You have the mind of Christ. If you don't know it, God will send somebody to you who does know it. Don't allow what you know and don't know to stop you from dreaming. You know the guy that, the guy over here that did Four Rivers, was that the Four Rivers? He started making that barbecue, and he wanted to expand, and God introduced him to the, what's his name, Chick-fil-A? What's that guy's name? Pruitt. Kathy Pruitt, Truitt, came and met him personally and taught him how to grow the business. But he had a dream to grow the business before God brought Truett to him. Your dream will bring the people to you. Boy, I mean, I'm just doing something. Let me finish Psalm 91. I'm, 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 I'm trying to get y'all. Y'all are so slow thinking here and listening. Surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and the perilous pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers. Under his wings you will take refuge. His truth will be your shield. You will not be afraid of the terror by day or the arrow that flies by day or the 9 millimeter, the 556, five, or COVID, nor pestilence, 1920, 22, that walks in darkness, the destruction that lays away. A thousand will drop dead next door and 10,000 down the street street, but it isn't even coming near me. I told you this story, and I've told it to you before, and I don't think you're listening to me, but the doctor told me I had a year to live, and I went home, and I planned a trip to Alaska to climb a mountain, and you can ask Lisa, I could barely get to the mailbox and get the mail out. You're going to die. I'm going to Alaska. They did a study years ago on people who live over 100, and they found one common denominator in them all. They weren't satisfied yet. A lady they, they interviewed that was in New Orleans who played jazz music. She's 100-something uh, years old. And they said, what is the secret to your life? She said, I have not written my last song yet. That's huge. See, she don't see herself dead. She sees herself playing the piano. I, I, I don't, I, just don't, don't get mad at me, but I will never be a part of the seniors meeting. Because it's for old people. Don't get mad at me. Lisa can come. There was another man. There was another man they interviewed over a hundred and some years of age, and he was an artist. And they said, "What do you attribute long life to?" He goes, "I still have a painting in me. I haven't drawn my final painting." Do you know that people die when they quit? 
don't quit. That's amazing, isn't it? The energy to do what you're doing is actually coming from your thought life. When you lose hope, you become hopeless. That's the beginning of the downturn. Even though you may be in a church and the word of God is preached and you may even have a job and you might even have income and money in the bank, but the moment you're hopeless, you can go ahead and put you in a box. But if the doctor told you you're going to die next week, if you have hope, you ain't going anywhere. Long life. Long life. Some of you older people need to say, I need to go visit my grandbabies. My kids ain't had all the kids they want to have, and I'm going to have me some babies, and I'm going to see them. I ain't leaving. Well, I'm, thinking, I'm trying to get done. Say, I'm pregnant with a miracle. So let's go back to Mary. Mary, you want to have a baby? I'd like to. According to your word, God, you be it unto me. And the Holy Ghost came on her, and she got pregnant. The moment that God can get you to say, according to your word, you be that unto me. By his stripes, I'm the healed. I'm the healed. I'm blessed coming in and going out. You businessmen, whatever I put my hand to, you know, prosper. Say, I have the mind of Christ. I have the wisdom of God. If this is working for a sinner, good God, what could God do with a tongue-talking, devil-chasing, holy road? You're one scripture away from a miracle. Now, here's the thing. Once that, mer once that word gets in you, it's in there. Don't run around talking about you ain't preg you, you pregnant, you pregnant. You, you got a baby in there. So when someone says, you ought to see my brand new pickup truck. There's the tire right there. Never mind. You know. Lisa's like, that ain't funny. That's, that's the bumper right over there. That's the bumper. <laughs> How important is your imagination? Folks, it's huge. Satan would love nothing better than to get into your head and paint a bad picture. And you're going to have to learn casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Now, you get that mess out of my head. I don't think like that. I'm not going down that road. People will say things to you. You idiot. You're not talking to me. I have the mind of Christ and the wisdom of God. Well, you know how you are. You're from Georgia. And that's where Herschel Walker came from. You better mind your matters. I might be jumping over your head in a minute. Boy, I got a lot of stories and I don't have any more time. When I started shooting handguns, the Lord told me to get on the internet and to watch people that were fast. Get it in your imagination. It wasn't long that I was doing what they did. Think about that a minute. That's when I said there's no lid. And I'm going to tell you one more story. Just one more. I think I told you this story. I don't know. I may have already told you this story. Did I tell you the story yet about the golfer? In Vietnam, there was a guy that got put in a concentration camp. And, went, and he was there a year or two. 
Um, and when he got out and brought him back to America, they put him on a golf course and he played the best game he'd ever played in his life. And they said, how did you keep your game up? He said, I played 18 holes every day. What else was there to do? So he's in a, he's in a bed, and in his mind, he walks up and puts a ball down. You can play good golf. You can make a hole in one if you want to. Oh, that looks good. He played 18 holes of golf every day and never stepped on a green. Mm hmm. I'm doing pretty good on it. Yes, you are. Yes. Your quiet time with God is not wasted time. Some of you need to go back to dreaming a little bit. Allow God. Allow him. Holy Spirit, his language is visions. And he'll, he'll, he'll say some things to you and you'll go, that's not even possible. Just be quiet. Think about it anyway. Dream about it anyway. I'm going to pray. Are y'all ready to get pregnant? No, and I know some of you women are going, no, no. I ain't talking about no baby again. I'm, some of you businessmen, you ready to get pregnant? Heavenly Father, we just opened up the Word of God and found out how you do miracles. We found out how you do them. You did it with Paul Youngie Cho. You did it with me. You're doing it with a lot of people on the planet, but you're waiting on us. You told, you told Andrew Womack that he was limiting you by his imagination. We're not going to limit you anymore. Stuff that looks impossible, whether it's healing, whether it's financial, whether it's a child or a family member not saved, looks impossible, but it's not. I'm asking you to give us dreams and visions. Help us get our hope back. Help us to see the way you see. Help us to think about ourselves and others the way you think. It'll be a job and take some doing. But I'm asking you starting today that many people who've lost hope or they see next week and next month as being the same old, same old, that we would actually sit down with the Bible and start dreaming. Nothing's impossible. You said nothing's impossible. But you need our mind to go there. You need us to go there. And I'm asking you to take us places we've never been before. I'm asking you to take us home to victory from glory to glory, wherever we are today. I pray over the sick that they'll be healed. I pray over the broke, they'll come out of debt. I pray over those that are, in, that are hopeless right now, that, that they'll begin to have a vision that now my best days are ahead of me. And I'll be all you called me to be. I'll do all you called me to do. And I'll give you the glory for it. God is waiting on you. God is waiting on you. And nothing you've asked him is impossible. Woo! Isn't this good? I'm going to tell you this. It's just, this is easy to preach. It's not the easiest thing to live. Because once you get your hope, you're going to find a scripture. you got to find a guarantee for that. Once you get the hot air, you go, that's real good, but I'm going to need a balloon right now. i got to put this whole, all this hot air in something. And you find a scripture, and you put that dream right in the middle of that scripture and say, okay, I got this. If it doesn't happen in a week or two, don't you worry about it. You just, you, just keep, you just keep praying over it. You keep thinking about it. And you just let that thing grow inside of you. And there will be a day you'll see it manifest in your life. I don't care what the doctor told you. You'll see your healing. I don't care what the, what the nurse told you. I don't care what your teacher, I don't care what your mother said. 
Your mother's not final authority. God is. Are you ready? Okay, I'm letting them out. Oh, it's 12 o'clock straight up. That's pretty good. I thought I was letting you all out early. Never happened. Praise the Lord. Amen. If I could have my altar workers come on up that are on for this Sunday. Praise the Lord. Just come on up. Do you remember in Mark 9 where Jesus said to the paralytic father, the father, uh, not the paralytic, the, the son that was having epileptic seizures, throwing himself in the fire. And he says, I brought them to your disciples, but they couldn't do anything with them. He said, if you can do something, please do something. And Jesus looked back at him and said, my, my paraphrase, not if I can, if you can. The father said, if you can do something, do something. And Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. So Jesus threw the if you can right back on him. Father said, if you can, Jesus said, if you can. We're going to do that all day. If you can, Jesus says, if you can. And so what are you, what are you canning today? What do you need to can today? Every one of you have desires. I don't care what today's economy looks like. Some people want a house. Some people want a new car. The economy, the economy, the economy. I don't care. This is a good time for y'all to start believing right now. It may not get better. It might, it might not. But what's that to you? If you're of God's economy. You put that picture on your wall and go, this is what I have. I don't know how it's going to come, but this is what I have. I mean, if a frog has to bring it to you. Okay? Don't, don't put... This is how it's got to come. That's not how it's got to come. You only have one responsibility. You're the believer. He's the performer. You don't have to bring it to pass. All he's saying is, if you can believe. And the way you start believing is start saying what you want, even though you don't believe it right now. Just start saying, God, with every faith, and that's what the man said. He finally looked back at Jesus and said, Dear God, help my unbelief. Lord, I believe. Now help me with what I don't believe. See, he knows you're human, so that's what you're going to say today. Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. This is what I'm believing you for. Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. You come forward this morning. If you need Jesus, you need him right now. You don't want to go to hell. Yes, I'm sorry. There is a hell, there's a heaven. You don't want to go there because it's forever. And you're not going to be partying down there with your friends. You're going to be by yourself in flame and torment with demons throwing you against the wall for the rest of eternity. You don't want that. You don't want that. You want Jesus. You want peace. Jesus loves you. He died for you, but he's not going to make you serve him. He's not going to make you say yes. So if you need anything today, if you can believe, Jesus said, bam, it's done. All things are possible. Him that believeth. Come up here. Pray with Miss Barbara. Pray with Mr. Frank, Mr. Lenny. We're going to spend time with you. I know there's tacos out there, but you can get prayer before you eat your taco. Okay? Amen? So, having said that, you're going to leave these doors. Please be quiet. And then resume talking in the foyer. Go support the youth that are going to youth camp. There's a couple tables, I hope, in the youth room with some chairs. If you want to hang out and socialize, take a friend with you back to the youth room. Y'all can eat your tacos at the table. Amen? Come on forward. Get prayer. We love you.